have the whole truth and nothing but, but there is a growing body of research into those headline-making sinkholes that can turn an abode into an abyss in the twinkling of an eye. Our cover story is reported now by Mark Strassman. If you're a fan of horror movies, sinkholes make perfect sense. The earth suddenly opens up with no warning and no escape and swallows whatever's on the surface. Cars, homes, entire neighborhoods. But sinkholes, of course, are all too real worldwide in places like China, Brazil, and Guatemala. Florida has so many of them, it has been called Swiss cheese covered by soil. It looked as if a bomb had been dropped in the middle of town. In 1981, this one near Orlando grew longer than a football field. One resident described a sound like giant beavers chewing. And just last month, a sinkhole in Chicago ate three cars. Of course, the sinkhole horror story most of us know best is the one back in February in Sefner, Florida, near Tampa where a sinkhole 20 feet wide and 60 feet deep opened in the middle of the night. It swallowed the bedroom where 36-year-old Jeff Bush was sleeping. He disappeared into the widening hole, screaming for help. His body was never found. The fourth known sinkhole fatality in Florida. About anywhere you live in Florida, there is a potential for sinkhole to you know, occur. I imagine there were pockets of water. John Arthur, Florida's state geologist, is an expert on sinkholes. Florida's surface has close to 70,000 likely sinkholes, at least 3,400 of them reported since the 1950s. A sinkhole is a, a naturally occurring feature that forms when a cavity in the subsurface collapses and basically what was a hole in the ground is now a hole at land surface. That cavity forms from the natural dissolving of rock Florida's bedrock, mostly limestone, lies below layers of soil, sand, and clay. That bedrock is porous and, over time, can erode and become unstable, forming what geologists call karst. From time to time, changes in the water table, natural or man-made, collapse this karst and create sinkholes. Those collapses can happen in minutes, but take months to settle. And all states but Hawaii have at least some karst. That's true. If you look at a map of karst for the nation, uh, there are little corners that have the potential for some type of karst activity. But clearly some states have a greater risk for sinkholes than others. Yes. And not all sinkholes are the work of nature, which takes us to Louisiana. Ask Nick and Brenda Romero about a sinkhole's impact. In 1997, they move full-time to Bayou Corn, a mix of working families and retirees 45 miles south of Baton Rouge. When this place was full of folks, what kind of a community was this? It first started out as a fishing community. People were friendly. They stopped. They talked. Uh, shared their stories. People liked each other so much, every year Bayou Corn held its own Mardi Gras parade, part of its Cajun charm. And what's the address here? 145 Crawfish Stew Street. Crawfish Stew Street. That's it. That's it. You see the bubbles coming up? Yep. But last May, people started noticing something odd. Gas bubbles in the water nearby. Then on August 3rd, a sinkhole opened one-third of a mile from the Bayou Corn neighborhood. Over the last nine months, that hole has stretched 15 acres wide and plunged 170 feet deep. It filled up with water, rock, oil, and natural gas. Are these folks coming back? No. 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 Yeah. No one enforced the mandatory evacuation order, but roughly 80% of Bayou Corn's 350 residents, including both of Romero's next-door neighbors, packed up and left. He wants to stay put. I'm not ready to just move out and depend on the sheriff or somebody to protect my, my property and everything I've worked so hard for. And this is home. This Your is home. home. This is home, yeah. And again, while most sinkholes are natural disasters, this one was not. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. Preventable. Yep. An oil and gas service company called Texas Brine was drilling into a massive underground salt deposit near Bayou Corn. 
The excavation caused the sidewall of a salt dome to collapse. Three months later, the sinkhole opened. We don't have a complete understanding of why that failure occurred. Bruce Martin, the vice president for operations at Texas Brine, says his company has drilled 30 relief wells, trying to contain and burn off natural gas leaking from the sinkhole into the aquifer. He believes the sinkhole will never threaten the homes in Bayou Corn. But the company, pressured by the state of Louisiana, is preparing buyout offers for all the residents. I would be upset if that was my home over there too. The response has been very challenging. It's been an all-encompassing, you know, full frontal assault for the past eight months. And I think we're starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel that it's coming to an end. But Martin also admits the sinkhole could continue to grow for another year or two. I think when is this going to end? Is it going to end correctly? Mary Lee Orr is the executive director of Lean, the Louisiana Environmental Action Network. The group says Bayou Corn's disaster should be a warning about developing in sinkhole-prone areas. Sadly, we do have sinkhole potential here, and we really want to make sure that they're buffer zones, that there are no homes or nursing homes or schools or hospitals anywhere near these, these salt domes. John Arthur, Florida's state geologist, says states could map land services for sinkhole risks and, where needed, toughen construction codes. If a home is built in a sinkhole sensitive area, is there anything you can do to prevent it? There are ways to mitigate that risk. You can grout inject and fill that hole and make the land more stable. It's a combination of geology and engineering that can hold the key to that answer. Texas Brine has been paying residents in Bayou Corn $875 a week to cover temporary housing costs. Buyout offers are expected in the next couple of weeks. But Nick Romero says trust between residents like him and the company has collapsed, like the sinkhole. He wants to stay, but he's torn between two loves. My wife has had cancer twice. And she doesn't want to be here. And I don't blame her. And I'm not going to force her to stay here. So we. We've looked for other places to go, but un until that time, I'm staying here. I'm not going anywhere. You love your house. You love your wife more. Yeah. The last thing the Romeros ever thought would be their major worry in retirement was a sinkhole. Well, Jeff, Johnny, we got you both in the movie.